Kevin says, does anyone know of a way possibly using Microsoft Teams PowerShell to remove the chat history of a group chat for one individual only who was accidentally added to a chat? In this case, the individual was accidentally added, then removed, but appears by doing this, they still have access to the chat history. And looking at retention policy aspects, appears it's only possibly to remove all the chat history of an individual, which isn't what I need. I need to remove the user's chat history from a single group chat they were accidentally added to. Absolutely not. I didn't think so, no. No. Um, go even through... speak to, go have a chat with them. Go yeah, make sure they've yeah. actually physically, like, you know, phone them up and well, on a support I mean, ticket and go in and delete. <laughs> well, it's, I mean, it sounds like, I mean, the, the issue is that they've been removed from the chat. Hmm. It, how is it adding them back in? Like, I, they, it, no, it's not adding them back in into this. Like, how far back can they over. see the chat history? So it's well, only, it's only the past access... history they don't want them to have. Yeah, yeah but. Oh, uh, well. Because when you add add someone into a group chat, you can yeah. say how far back do you want to just see the last 24 hours, the last, you know, so how far back, you know, you can see all. And if they've done the whole, that person can see all the history of the chat, then they've got literally the whole history of the chat. So I would be immediately phoning that said individual or give, giving them a call and going, look, I'm sorry, I've added you to this chat. Can I please just, you know, get you, I need to physically watch you delete the history of the chat so that you're not actually reading it and you would accidentally add it in i would have reached out immediately because it's not like you've got a back-end way right. as you said mike there's no back-end way to go delete it's a physical functionality of an individual needing to do from a security perspective but yeah. what if they can't based on the policy that's been set up that they can't delete that, that the individual true. can't delete that yeah that yeah, might be true. part of the scenario it true. Could be. So, yeah. i mean could you go for that one profile and uh, and waive that policy, turn that off for them, go and delete it, then go turn that policy back on. But that won't, that still won't remove the, the ability for them to already have the chat. Well, I'm, I'm saying if they're no longer part of the chat, so they've been removed, but they still, because they were a member of the chat, they have that yeah, a policy. history. And so, but if you, if you then, for that, if you could for that individual, this is like, like I'm asking, I'm not saying this is, like, couldn't you go in, pause that policy for this individual as the admin, go in, have the conversation with them, see them delete that history of that chat and individually then, and then re-enable the policy that doesn't allow them to delete. So you temporarily give them the ability to delete, to delete. that one individual. What I don't know is, is if you can turn that off for an individual or it has to be done is it a global policy or is it something that I could focused? So having um, that window of have them standing at the desk, be on the walkie talkie, like, okay, turn the global policy off now. Let's delete this. Okay, we're done. Turn it back on. Like, I don't know what's real. That was my Have you ever known thing. anything in Microsoft that worked that fast? <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm just saying in my hypothetical to go and yeah. do that, whether that's possible there, or not. But There probably is a way to have a group and put that person into it and then set it up to, to do what you're saying, Christian. But I would go back to you. But are you breaking the retention policy of that really like by by deleting that, like, could there be anything in an audit or anything like that that says, hey, like this was not retained for the amount right, of time right. that it should have been? Or why did you allow this person to delete this? Or why was this? Why was this enabled temporarily and then turned mm -hmm. back off? So there's other things that it could impact. Yeah, yeah. And Heather, to your point, catch twenty two. Yeah, and Heather, to your point too, is that what if this person actually saw this history, and it was something that you know affected them or affected you know something uh, uh, sensitive information that yeah. they weren't supposed hey, let's to fire see. Joe. Whoa, Joe, you were I mean, supposed to be here. Well, besides right. it be, besides that being a resume generating event, you know, for the person who did, who let them into the chat and gave yeah. them that full history, um, that it's the thing about you know IP. You're at the point of IP right now, and exactly how much does this person know? I mean, it becomes it becomes an HR thing. Well, from a legal <laughs> perspective, from a legal perspective too, if this person saw something and if there was something that 
there could be some legal action or something happening, mm. then should that be there from a discovery perspective? Like there's so many then, ways we yeah. could go with this, right? right. Yes. Yeah. So yes. that that's what, if you have, if, if your organization has a, you know, legal department or has a, you know, governance group around that thing. I mean, one, like I understand the concerns, but you could also document that, have that, have it acknowledged, have it approved around that. Like, hey, look, this is a mistake. We're not from a governance from an audit perspective, we're not trying to pull something over. This mistake was made. This is what we went in and did to correct that thing. And and even keep a record of, like, don't just delete it, but say, like, this is the information that has access to. You could have that as a file separately. Um, of So you're retaining the actual record was deleted, just that that individual no longer has access to that. So you could even export that history for that user then delete it from their view, but then still have it as a record, part of your documentation. But again, I would go back and say, depending on the policies, depending on the standards, depending on what your organization has and what kind of review, legal process, compliance policies, whatever industry standards you have to be held to, document, document, document that thing. Like, I, I mean, I could see, um, not that I'm an attorney, um, but I was when I was 19 uh, years old, was a run a law firm. So, you know, um, it rubs off, I've heard. So, <laughs> uh, but that, I mean, that is something that you could, I could see that you could go in and justify, this is what we did. Here's the audit trial. This is why we documented. This is what we did. Here's the file. This was what was actually before we deleted it from their perspective. Like we exported that we had that, that should cover you, but talk to your attorney. What a, I I mean, I think about that like like should there be some feature to enable that kind of thing that then is in the logs you see what happened the scenario where that applies and I, that's why I say, like I don't think that there's a need for a feature that does that thing it's kind of like when I was working for companies building migration software we had a lot of people come and say once it's migrated can I have an auto delete we're like we're not doing that we will never add a delete button to our feature. Once it's moved, delete. Oops, something was wrong. Oh, I already deleted it. Like, nope, we're not gonna be offer you that feature. Like I see this scenario for Microsoft. Mm -hmm. It would mm -hmm. not make sense to create a feature to do that. I yeah. think you'd have to go through the steps that I, that I described. Yep. Makes sense. Agree.